Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Interconnect 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. Okay, we are back live inside the Cube. This is Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. Show my co-host, Dave Vellante, co founder of Wikibon Research. Our next guest is Jeff Fry, C uh, CTO, System Z platform with IBM. Uh, welcome to the Cube. Thank you. Thank um, you. So System Z is the big event we covered in New York City at the Jazz Center, which is phenomenal. It's the mainframe, huge, I call it the God Box, but you know, that's a California <laughs> term, I guess. It's powerful, it's a mainframe system, but no one calls high performance computing mainframes anymore. Yeah. They're just big machines that yeah. kick ass, basically. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. what's under the hood? What is the, the mainframe evolution to this modern world? You know, people still probably have mainframes out there, big banks and whatever, yeah. but, but right now it's about speed, I need in memory, I got all this stuff going on, yeah. large data, tsunami of data. What's the innovation, what's under the hood? Well, I, I think that, um, you know, a traditional value of the mainframe is, is uh, you know, the more work you put on it, the better it performs, right? It's a, it's a, it's a large shared pool of resources. It's got the best, you know, fastest single thread processor speed in the industry, lots of memory. Uh, we focus on a balanced system design. So processor, memory, bandwidth, internal buses, um, I.O., it it's all comes together to, to, to provide you know, ultimate scale and performance. Um, and with the Z13, you know, we've taken another turn on, on that crank, right? With uh, uh, absolute best single thread performance uh, in the industry. I think what's interesting about this mainframe is that we really focused on compute performance. Right? So, you know, the traditional- Give an example of, like, to the order of magnitude, <coughs> like, okay, I get the single threaded thing, that's great. But like performance, what does that mean? Well, we have you know, a, a 5.0 gigahertz single thread core, right? Which is you know, uh, probably almost double what, what, what most uh, distributed platforms have in terms of you know, single thread performance. Uh, and while uh, you know, a lot of competitive you know, server platforms have traded off single thread performance for more cores or uh, more parallelism scale out, you know, we, we, we haven't given up on that. Everybody's hitting the laws of physics, right? Uh, and in terms of the rate at which you can improve performance in these single threads, but uh, we're pulling every trick we know out of the book to, to ensure that we, we deliver you know, industry linked performance. And, and you say you fo focus this time around on compute performance as opposed to I.O.? Well, like, like uh, well, I, I think there's a, a, a well, um, a, a well-earned re uh, reputation for Z being, you know, a high volume uh, transaction processing engine, data serving, uh, traditional workloads. Uh, but I think there had been a view that uh, if you want to do numeric intensive or compute intensive or statistically, uh, you know, mathematically intensive workloads, you run those somewhere else. And, you know, with the advent of, of our objective to get more predictive and prescriptive analytics to the platform, uh, with this machine in particular, we focused on uh, mathematical performance of, of the engines, right? So we introduced vector processing, single instruction, multiple data, lots of memory, Right, multiple threads per core, and that all contributes to. Compute. I see what you're saying. So yeah, the mainframe you don't think of as your traditionally as your high performance computing right. system. Right. Should we start thinking about it? Well, as I, a high think, I think I think you know I, I think there are extremes right uh, in terms of high performance computing, but it's it's fair to I think recognize that uh, commercial traditional even traditional transaction processing is becoming more compute intensive. Uh, the language runtimes uh, are, are making more use of, of compute performance rather than just moving data around, right? So, and I think it's, it's really part of the, the core strategy here uh, to use tools like, uh, you know, IBM's SPSS, right? Modeling tools which generate these, you know, these statistical models and those, those, those things are mathematically and computationally intense. So we got to make sure we run those you know, best of breed on the platform. You've got a long history at IBM, we were talking off camera. When you saw the virtualization trend occur, yeah. 
What, what did that feel like to you? <laughs> you know, when I say the versatility, I mean VMware specifically. Yeah, I, I thought you might yeah. have been talking about 1967 yeah, yeah. when right. we invented it. Right, right. So yeah. that's, uh, that's, that's what I mean. Yeah. I mean, so did you just look at that and shake your head or say, boy, that was a missed opportunity or what was going through well, your mind? Well, you at know, that I, I think that, uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, we, we you know, you, you had mentioned, uh, we were talking a little bit off camera, you know, Z tends to be, uh, you know, kind of the workhorse that just, it, it kind of works in the back room and, you know, it doesn't break so it doesn't get a lot of attention, right? <laughs> um, and and people, I think there, there are some that, that just aren't completely aware, completely up to speed on, on the technologies uh, that, that have been in this platform for quite some time. Now, the, the guys at VMware have done a, a fantastic job, right, of, uh, of taking the x86 environment and virtualizing it. We still have, in my opinion, best of breed server virtualization. Uh, the, the benefit that we have is that it's in the hardware, right? Um, that level of integration is the way we get near native performance out of our, our out of our engines, even when they're virtualized uh, and 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 highly virtualized. I, I think the thing with virtualization that that uh, we need to be focusing on now is not just whether or not the processors are. Um, you know, are effectively utilized, or you know how much work you can consolidate on on the platform, because that's a strength of Z. We can take, you know, you know, 10, 20 cores worth of x86 and run it on a single engine on Z, right? And that's been a strength of our virtualization. And I think now with with cloud and and with all this dynamic provisioning and software defined environments, I think the key to virtualization is in the management, right? So uh, to have a, a really good, effective standardized way to do virtualization management is really the key. And, and so, when you talk about relative to x86, you, you've got an advantage because it's in the hardware and firmware. Perf that's a performance and a utilization yeah, factor. Yeah. Your, yeah. Your, your virtualization tax is not as great. Right. It's really minimal, it's, it's, it's de minimis. Yeah, yeah I, like I said, we and, run near native speeds. Yeah, and, and, and VMware, you're right, has done a very good job, but I wanted to ask your opinion on something. So in 2009, I listened to Paul Moritz. Yeah. He was at an investor um, financial analyst meeting. And he said, we are building a software mainframe. And I was taking notes and I went, that's interesting. Now they don't use that term anymore. The marketing yeah, yeah. people at VMware said, no, stop saying software mainframe. It's not, we don't want to market it that way. Yeah, but, yeah. Well, but what it was. Well, but, what he meant was, but, it's all software in the world. But, that's yeah, the beginning of Moritz, the catalyst we're seeing. And he understands technology. So that really caught my attention. I said, wow, okay, let's, Never goes down, as you said, it's mm -hmm. global sysplex. Yeah. I, I thought about that. It runs any workload, yeah. any app, yeah. highly virtualized. Has VMware, in your opinion, built a software mainframe? No. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me why. Well, I mean, I think the, the <laughs> part of what makes a mainframe a mainframe is, is the economies of scale, right? Uh, as I said earlier, uh, the thing actually runs better when you put more work on it. So you know when when other competitive systems can can drive utilizations uh, to 80, 90, even 100 percent, right, with consistent response times across all of the uh, all of the workloads, th then maybe they'll have th then maybe they'll have some of the mainframe characteristics. I think what he was referring to, which which I happen to agree with, is this notion of software-defined environments. Right. I mean, I think. You know, virtual. The, the point I made earlier, virtualization isn't just about having fast or yeah. utilized uh, hardware anymore. It's about using virtual virtual resources as the foundation for all of your op operational environment. Right? When you virtualize a system, you know it's dynamic. It can be programmed. You can grow it. You can shrink it. You can dynamically instantiate it. You can make it smarter. And, and these are the things. That's the holy grail. Yeah. This That's is the this holy is grail. what software brings. So if we can make hardware look more like software, right? Server storage and network. Holy grail. Holy grail. Holy grail. So I got to. So I want to get your perspective on this. It did, we talk about this all the time on theCUBE. The software mainframe by Moritz, a great vision. 2010, great vision. what happened next? It was like the it's, no, Kennedy it, no, moonshot. No, it stalled. It was a Picasso that he painted, the Mona Lisa <laughs> of tech. Okay, beautiful. The problem was the market wasn't ready for you. All the stuff going on in the stack, then they go to Pivotal, so they bring everything over to Pivotal, yeah. decouple, nice yeah. little concept. But they're still working on uh, the virtualization piece on the network layer. Yeah. So there's still work to be done. So I, I think it's, it's storage, by the way. Yeah. Right. Well, I think I. Yeah. I think the, the moonshot is software mainframe. 
yeah. and they're just they're just not there yet. Yeah. yeah, the industry. Yeah, yeah. So you know, well, I, you guys but, have but, it. But, but Steve, you're <laughs> saying <laughs> utilization is not the the battleground anymore. For, certainly for you, but when you look at the real utilization of a of a VMware environment, yeah, you know, they're talking twenty, thirty, they, maybe forty percent. They talk yeah. Yeah. like way over fifty. It's no way, not even close. Yeah, the Floyer's knows right. Our David Floyer knows this stuff. Certainly, sub thirty percent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, for the balance of the industry, it is still. Uh, yeah, yeah, a yeah. Watermark you know, I, I don't mean to. I don't mean to suggest that's not important. What What I'm suggesting is for you. Next, what's yeah. next? And what's next is, is to make use of virtualization as the foundation for all operational control of the environment. But aren't you doing that today? Um, yeah, we, we we do a lot of that today. But I think, I think we have focused on the mainframe on on the traditional core value proposition of our virtualization being utilization and performance and, and scale, right? Um, you'll see us do even more than we do today uh, in, in the way of optimizing underlying resources based on the needs of the workload, right? That's another strength of ours, right? Is that, is that we can assign uh, service levels to the work and then have the operating system and the underlying hardware and virtualization layers uh, optimized to those, to those, you know, to the business importance of the work. So, what's your take on Docker? Docker has this this model, and we just heard Nancy Pierce talk about the cloud, new division, all the IBM resources coming together, and they're probably going to just jam, just run like the wind. Now, you bring a different perspective in technology with the mainframe, and you've been working under the under the hood. Share with the audience what's the modern uh, stuff that you've done that that makes it state of the art, state of the art. It's already runs workloads, does all that stuff. What is it? Is it Linux involved, the Java? Tease out some of the highlights, the new shiny, you know, part of the engine that you've added onto this. Yeah, team. well well with with this particular announcement, uh, for the first time, you know, we've we focused on core engine performance, again, right? Delivering forty percent more capacity, lots more cores, ten terabytes of memory on this machine, right? So, I mean, we we know speeds and feeds game, but let's get down and dirty on this. Who does that help? Is it a big bank? Minutes matter, right, for some of these guys. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, take take, uh, you know, with with people wanting to put more data, more data in memory, right? If you give a, a terabyte of memory to DB2 running on this platform, right, um, and and have it use that stuff for uh, for in memory, more in memory, you reduce IOs, you improve perform, you improve response time by 70% for the, for those transactions, right? And those are all core transactional environments that are running, right? Those financial institutions, those banks, those insurance companies. And that's hardcore users that you have on that, right? It's like big, and can, what's the alternative? Say the Z wasn't around. I'd have to go build out a distributed system, buy some boxes. Yeah, I mean, the... people, I think generally, uh, you know, believe that, that in the absence of a mainframe, right, and <laughs> the value proposition I think you get with a mainframe, it's all about scale out, right? You know? I heard some customers tell me off the record at the Z event, I won't say their names, but let's just say they're <laughs> huge, and they don't mind writing big fat checks. Yeah. <laughs> the stakes are high. Yeah. Um, they said, we've already bought three, not even looking at it. Sight Based on unseen. The Sight unseen, got the beta, we're just like, and I go, I go. So you're writing a blank check? Is it R and D? It's cool. You got a good R and D. No, 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 no. Well, I he mean, said minutes matter. Yeah. Hundreds of millions of dollars matter on a minute window. Yeah. Minutes window. Yeah. So anything you can squeeze performance. Well, it's not just that. It's availability, right? I mean, the the ability to make sure that you have a platform if it's running core critical business that's that's always there, always on, all the time, right? It's not going to It's not going to, you know. Uh, provide you know resiliency or availability problems. That's that's key to a lot of our customers. Accessibility yeah, too is yeah, important. Accessibility. Yeah, but Z13 is not changing my application availability, is it? Or no. Or well, right? improving it. I mean, we continue. Like, yes, you know, the technical corp of this is that, you know, take our I/O subsystem, right? Every release, including this machine, we make the subsystems that drive I/O smarter, more autonomic, right? So we have hardware that can sense congestion in the fabric, congestion in the network, can route around failures, all transparently, right? Multi-pathing that does transparent routing around congestion and failure with no impact to the application whatsoever, right? This, this is what uh, okay. we focus on. I see, okay, yeah, that's certainly you can measure that as application availability. I want to talk more about I.O. Um, you say you focused on com compute performance. Yeah. But then you mentioned innovations in I/O. It goes yeah, through yeah. the whole. Yeah. The balance system is the is the key. Yeah. I remember, 
when I was a young pup in this business, I, I lived inside of the systems and technology guides. I would just pour through that stuff. And I remember when IBM announced MVSXA, expanded storage, we said, wow, if IBM could persist that memory extension, it would be totally be a game changer. Yeah. And we were a few decades ahead of our time, I guess, in terms yeah. of understanding what technology could and could it do. But now Flash yeah. comes into play, yeah. um, and you're starting to see the pendulum swing back, <laughs> that you know, persistence you know, at near memory speeds. So can you talk about Flash and, and where it fits? Yeah, I mean, we got, a, we got a couple, uh, there's a couple places we can talk about Flash, right? You know, the, the traditional thought on Flash is, you know, you build storage with, with you know, you build storage, Flash, flash uh, in, in, in our storage subsystems. And, and of course, you know, the latency and the performance is, is extraordinary, right? Um, and, and so we're, we're even looking at the possibility of, of uh, synchronous I.O. And, and, and really exploiting right, the, the response times and the latency improvements that Flash can give you in the storage devices themselves. But the other emphasis for Z is internal Flash. We actually have the ability to put you know, 6.4 terabytes worth of internal Flash in the system, and we use that for internal purposes, right? So in a, in a traditional ZOS system now, you can completely eliminate all of the paging, right, virtual memory paging to external disk, right, by using internal flash. That gives performance advantage, that gives availability advantage, right, it's, it's huge. So, given the slow nature of, of spinning disk, um, you mentioned paging. How much emphasis in the, prior to flash did you actually put on paging algorithms? Again, given the latency, and do you have to sort of rethink paging now with that well, like, resource. Like I said, I mean, there are, in, in the last generation machine is where we introduced this, and one of the primary use cases was paging, right? Um, and so, you know, the, the performance you get out of that internal flash and the availability is, is extraordinary. Well, but now, what about when I'm running Linux? Um, it's coming. Because I, I would yeah, think that, it, that Linux coming. open source industry didn't even worry about paging. For well, a, I, I a mean, long I think there's paging of the guests, right? And then there's paging a, and memory overcommitment and optimizations you can make on the virtual machines themselves. Right. Right. So that's our next step, right? Is to make use and really exploit internal flash, right, for the hypervisor itself. Right. Because one of the big benefits to scaling up a virtual environment is effective memory management, working set management. Right. Uh, overcommitment of memory, and flash will help. So you're essentially bypassing spinning disk, and as well as the, the storage protocol. That's overhead. that's correct, and it's all internal. Right. And so it's essentially a memory extension. Yeah. Sort of. That's the way we. That's rights. the way we view it. That's the way we view it. Is a natural, kind of high performance extension in the memory hierarchy. And it's an atomic write into that memory extension. Yeah. Or, and you're doing that today, or? Yeah, we're doing that today on the last generation of machine, the EC12. We introduced the, the flash. Uh, for ZOS, it was a ZOS only environment. And are paper. apps being rewritten to take advantage of that? No, or, uh, no. or new apps? Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of what we do in the underlying middleware operating system hardware, I, I think another benefit to the mainframe is that is that we introduce this technology and wherever possible, uh, exploit it transparently to the application, right? So it's not that some of these capabilities aren't made available to the application, but in, in the real leverage point is all of a sudden your operating system, your DB2, your web sphere, that stuff just runs faster and better, right, with no change to the app. We did that with networking, uh, where we introduced, uh, you know, you mentioned high performance computing before. InfiniBand brought us, uh, you know, RDMA capabilities for, for, for networking. So we've introduced that now on standard converged Ethernet completely transparent to the application. So now any applications that are driving JDBC access or to DB2, for example, standard socket IP transparent to the app, getting huge performance gains because we slide this stuff under, underneath it and it's all transparent. All right, Jeff, we're getting the hook here. We got the, the keynotes going on. Thanks for coming on the really appreciate it. Bottom line for the folks out there, what the System Z platform all about, bottom line and bumper sticker for what Z is about this, these days. Yeah, I, I think that uh, the positioning here is with Linux, right, with the advances in the hardware, it's, it's focused on not only providing the traditional value proposition for the traditional workloads, but with Linux, with standardization, with best of breed virtualization, with the openness and the standardization to plug into standard cloud environments, 
right? You take all of that value of economy of scale, it's a great cloud platform. You're bringing analytics to the platform with the compute intensive stuff, right? Very important for us, 80%. Security solid. Security is solid, we've got advances in our crypto uh, stuff again uh, in this. Uh, the crypto is a big deal. I think in, that's, in this machine, that's a big deal. Right, right 2x there. performance over the last generation. Big memory analytics. Big memory, right? All right, there it is. It's the big iron. It's the god box. <laughs> it's 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 all knowing. It's more. The more work you give it, the harder it pushes and the better performance. Yeah. Yeah, Love yeah. that line. This is the cube. Same here. The more interviews we do, <laughs> the better we get. <laughs> sure we love we it. Get. We're bringing it out to you. It's the cube with the event coverage here and IBM Interconnect Live in Las Vegas. We'll be right back to the short break.